Hello everyone, welcome to City Skylines 2. Not normally what I feature on my aerospace oriented YouTube channel, but I did do some videos on City Skylines way back in the day, and there seems to be some curiosity about the new game, especially during the live stream. There were people popping in to see how it was, and so I decided to do a video on it. I played about five hours so far, and I got off of Game Pass for PC, so I didn't pay separately for it. And I start off with the Barrier Island map. You see there, there are 10 maps that come with the game. And I decided to name the city... Well, I tried out some of the random names that came from the random name generator, but those weren't particularly inspiring. Lidbury, Marble City, Middleham, very English. Uh, so instead I decided to go for Rio de Flamenco. Uh, it was just the first thing that came to mind. I wanted Rio de Janeiro, Rio something, I just went with Rio de Flamenco. So anyway, European obviously with a name like that. And uh, yeah, you can see natural disasters is checked, but I'll tell you that I didn't encounter any. There were warnings of natural disasters, but none actually affected my city during the gameplay. And I disabled tutorials because I'm sort of a SimCity veteran having played the original SimCity back in the day. So I know the general flow, but the particulars, I'll discuss the particulars as we go along. Uh, so here we have where we started out and we are on the island. I would probably prefer to be on the mainland and expand onto the island because then we can make the island all fancy, but this is fine too. All the roads come with the electrical lines as well as the water and sewage lines, so you don't have to place those separately anymore. So that's very convenient, one of those quality of life improvements that come with the game. The game has high voltage and low voltage power lines now, and a transformer station to convert the high voltage into the low voltage that the households need. But it turns out that the wind turbines that I originally placed because I was trying for a green city kind of thing, uh, just output low voltage immediately, so I had to bulldoze all the high voltage lines. I didn't need them as it turns out. So uh, yeah, you'll have to check whether your power plants are outputting high voltage or low voltage is a new thing. And there's transformers. You get these milestones. It's sort of like when your city grow, grew to a certain population in City Skylines 1. Uh, but now it's based on XP and sort of a variety of factors instead of just the city population and you get a money bonus as well as points for development and so instead of it giving you certain things that unlock at certain uh, population levels you can spend the development points in the development section the development tab up there in order to unlock certain buildings and so there's the development tab and you can see there's uh, advanced road services parking areas there and then different power plants i actually decided to go fast for the solar power plant just to see how that would work out i think uh in retrospect that was probably not the best idea and i'll probably prioritize other things next time but you can see so you now have a choice instead of uh, just getting handed something at a certain population, which is nice. I like that improvement. This is a close-up. Now, people have been talking about performance issues. This is the highest level of uh, quality. I'm running an i5-12600K, and I've got 64 gigabytes of RAM and an RTX 2070 graphics card. So, this is how it is on Game Pass. I think people on Steam seem to be having more trouble. At least somebody had said that seems like the Steam version might be having trouble. I'm not sure. But anyway, this is how it was for me. Uh, mind you that the video is being recorded at 30 frames per second, so you're not going to see more than 30 frames per second. Uh, yeah. Uh, I eventually turned motion blur off. Uh, it is currently on at this point, but one of the viewers recommended turning it off, and I did. Here is the placement of uh, the graveyard, the first graveyard, and placing these special buildings gives you more XP so that you can uh, get these advancements. And early on, the money that these uh, new milestones gives you uh, is actually the primary driver to your budget. The budget doesn't go so well without those. The fire and rescue service and that's a little fire warning but again it didn't force. affect me but that was a force fire warning smoke, audible was a serious health risk to anyone nearby at this time all citizens in the affected area are instructed to immediately move to a so we don't have too many different uh radio channels and sometimes they get rather annoying i'll tell you it's almost like you know how they sell the radio dlcs now there's a reason for that because sometimes those channels are annoying and you'll want to switch to something else. Okay, so eventually I make progress, we're about 4,000, 
And we, I still haven't unlocked large roads, uh, much less highways yet, though they're in parallel right there, which is interesting. And uh, I decided instead to build our first harbor, and there's that, and we actually have to connect it to the waterways too. And so I do that. We actually have to pay for connections. It's sad. Anyway, so there we have that. I don't know if that'll improve the influx of people into our city. I mentioned some of the more annoying things on the radio. This is one of the annoying ads. And she all looking at me like it's on. So I do a full body girk like, and she's like, and I say, yeah, I, I really didn't need this one. And occasionally the music gets a little bit repetitive. I've included this ad at length for your um, for your assessment. Anyway, one thing you'll notice is that there are three different demand bars for the residential uh, demand uh, down there, and the top one is the low density, the middle one is middle density, and the bottom one is high density, and then there's commercial and industrial. So that actually slows down the progress of the city growth compared to the city skylines one, because we used to just like wipe out all of the low density and build the high density, right? Uh, it was sort of a natural thing once there was enough residential demand, you just like replace low density with high density and everything would be high density. No, no such thing here. They're, they are separate now. And so that is a sort of an improvement, but it does slow down the progress a little bit as far as the population growth is concerned. You'll note that I'm putting uh, little farms here. Well, actually these are timber industry. So we do have that sort of, but it's completely different than before. And one thing you can do is you can mark out the area that they can exploit as far as their resource consumption. The first one actually didn't have any timber available because those trees were grayed out. The second one that I outlined had some green trees and those green trees were available for resource consumption. The other ones could not be consumed. I don't know what the rules are for why some become gray and all that when there are clearly trees there, but anyway, that's how it is. We also get these special buildings like this pop musician mansion which grant benefits to the city. And so we have this special section for these unique buildings and you get them uh, because you've accomplished something or another. Uh, I forget which one this is tied to, but I decided to find a good area for its benefits. They have a range. And so I plop it, where do I put it, uh, around there? No, nope. <laughs> very indecisive about where to put these sorts of things. Uh, there, okay, fine. So that's the Pop Musician's Mansion. And there are other special buildings, of course, you saw the little menu for those. Uh, we have a really dire budget. Like I said, a lot of the early budget is driven by the influx of money for achieving the milestones, and otherwise the budget is a little bit iffy. I decided to turn down the electric costs because that was the huge thing, and that's why I think maybe I should have delayed the solar power plant a bit because we didn't really need all that power. Uh, this is the look at night. I felt like I was spending a lot of time at night at this, with the city though, so... Uh, it, that was just right before dawn, that, that was the moon glowing, and then we got the dawn pretty quickly after that. But yeah, there was a lot of nighttime. Here I clicked on a point in the air that seemed like a UFO, but it was just an airline connection to other places. So trying to reach busy town here. I noticed gated community, I really don't want that in my city, but whatever, we'll see. There might be a purpose to it, unfortunately. So here's what the city looks like at this point, uh, population 7,700 or so. I didn't notice any huge drops in population, it was all very smooth, uh, there wasn't any sudden things happening, and when I made changes the reactions were pretty quick but smooth, so there wasn't any sudden elimination of population. Now you saw me uh, sort of uh, outlining the timber industry area for those. We also have areas for the farmland, so we have different farms here though. They didn't employ too many people, so I don't know about the benefits. Uh, they do provide food for the place, and there is sort of a balance to that. Uh, other things you can outline are the landfills, so you can decide how much landfill area that is, so you don't have to keep plopping different landfills. You can just expand the area that they have to contain the garbage as we get one of those unique buildings there, a signature building to 
add to our city again. So yeah, uh, those are quality of life quality of life improvements. Just being able to outline those things and occupy the area with farms like that. And so I got to busy town, and that's nearly 8,000 population right now. At nighttime, I noticed that our electric situation was not great. We have a battery available for the solar power, of course, and but the battery was depleting, so I decided to create a geothermal power plant right there. There are groundwater patches that you can use for the geothermal plants. And then, of course, I had to redo the wiring, the high voltage lines and low voltage lines and all that business. We do have a transformer sitting there. And then I discovered that we have a sewage problem. We didn't have enough sewage treatment and we don't have much budget now. So as I increase the budget for the sewage, because I decreased it before, we don't really need that many pumps. And I think there's only one sewage outlet for the entire thing right now. But we, uh, we do need to budget it properly. And our budget is very low. So of course, when your budget is low, you just hope you have areas to zone so that you can expand your population like that as our our demand though is really really low so it was slow going at this stage though eventually the the money picked up and i crawled my way to a better situation i started following people <laughs> and uh, i wanted to follow one of our citizens we've got this uh, Henry Kingsley here that I decided to follow. Uh, I eventually clicked the little thing with Jig. There, there we go. You can focus like that. And now uh, we're far following Henry Kingsley. And so that's how our little. I still want to call them Sims, but whatever we call City Skyline residents, there they are. On a rainy day without an umbrella. All of them. And all the little vehicles. So those are all simulated in theory. A high school student there. Anyway, so yes, our city at 12,000 population now. Probably about four hours in at this stage. Now I mentioned the landfills and how we can increase the size of them. The recycling centers were an irritation. We only have one and that's because they're 880,000 each and they only process 10 tons a month and we have a lot even at this size for a city. We have a lot of trash. So I kept having to increase the landfill size and I didn't want to build the incinerator plant because, well, again, I was trying for a green city and even though we have the available development points, I didn't want to spend it on that. But how many, uh, the recycling center takes a lot of space. There are upgrades for these buildings. So if I click the recycling center, you can see these upgrades, but the only upgrade that increased the processing capacity only increased it by one ton per month. So it didn't seem like it was going to be enough. I, I don't know. Uh, I'll have to look at that further exactly how much we're producing, but it seemed like we were producing quite a lot. There were also additions to the landfill itself that could potentially help ti a tiny bit. Um, but yeah, I I'll need to look at those numbers and see what the optimal is. Here I'm creating a second landfill across the bridge from the main island. And I figured that was at least prudent since that area is going to expand separately as well. So you saw me outlining the landfill area there. And that'll ease some of the tension perhaps. But at this point we are at 17,000 population and we stretch coast to coast on the island. As you can see, the north coast to the south coast anyway. And there I was buying another little plot of land. We actually have 13 available based on our milestones, but I don't have enough money to purchase all those little bits of area and not much to do with them yet because I'm still trying to fill out this area. So I continue to expand because there is low density residential demand but there's no medium or high density residential demand yet and I'll have to see how that goes. Basically I concluded with the population around 17,000 having created a bus line, a tram line and a sort of ship line from the island to the mainland. Uh, but nobody was, well, 48 passengers were using that. And so that was the situation I more or less left the city in. The budget was okay-ish, especially after I reached the next milestone. So we're at Big Town, we are approaching level 9 now. And at level 9 I decided to conclude, but that's our budget there. 
so tight but manageable because of the money that we get with the milestones so yeah uh, there are interesting quality of life improvements and i didn't personally have any of the performance issues but i understand other people did and yeah there's some interesting design choices it's smoother and sort of easier but also because of the divided up density demand for the residential areas uh, the progress seemed a little bit slower and we will see how that goes but for now with my city at 17,000 I'll say thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time